American Institute, and actually, um, I'm the last person to have spoken about Palestinian rights on the podium of the Democratic Party. That was 1998. That was the last time that issue was addressed. And I got there because I was a senior advisor with Reverend Jesse Jackson, and we had a minority appointment. I want to tell you, I did it. We had 1,400 delegates carrying Palestine lids and two states for two people signs on the floor of the convention. And it was very powerful. I was, uh, I rode the Jackson Way into the, as a member of the Democratic National Committee in 1988. And after that, the last day of the convention, I was asked to withdraw from the DNC. They said it'd be too controversial. Um, the chair of the party, Ron Brown, said, I'll make it up to you. Um, and he did. He came to Arab American events, recognized the role of our community as a party, reappointed me um, a few years later. But the sting of that stayed with me. And what really got me was, and this is what I want to tell you, the last, right after I did it, I, Reverend Jackson said, why did you do it? I said, I didn't want a bullseye on my back. And he said, man, you should never quit. Never quit. He said, because that's exactly what they want you to do. They want you to quit. What they're afraid of is that you'll stick around and fight. And so I stuck around and fought. And we continue to fight. And yes, we have endured enormous pain. And yes, we have endured insults. And yes, we've not made the progress that we should make. And we're seeing this unfold here today. If I were to leave this room with any slogan, it wouldn't be not another bomb. It'd be make the damn call. That's what I tell them, just make the damn call. You know why? Because there isn't a single vote that will be lost if a compassionate Palestinian speaker takes the podium of the convention. Not a single vote will be lost, but there will be votes gained. And having made the decision that they've made, there's not a single vote that they'll gain. There's going to be some votes that they lose. There's nobody out there in the pro-Israel community who's going to say, well, God bless the Democrats. They're silencing Palestine. Because those folks are already voting for Donald Trump. I mean, think about the times that this issue has even been obliquely mentioned at the convention. It got cheers. It got cheers. The base of our party is very clear about this. So what I call it the decision that they've made or the decision that they've fallen, I don't even know how it got made. I wouldn't put this on the candidate. I just, I mean, I know how these things work. I mean, these, who knows? I have no idea how this process came. But what I do know is that it is an unforced error. Coach Waltz, this is an unforced error. That's how you talk about it in sports. You didn't have to do it. It was stupid. Undo it, make the damn call. Palestinian voices need to be heard. Look, I went to this convention. I've been at this convention. I've been at all these conventions. They've got everybody, every conceivable combination of identities was on that stage speaking. What the hell's wrong with an Arab American? We're people. Why in particular now not a Palestinian American? We're people. I told them at the time when I was testifying for the platform committee and they had that line in there, like they did in 2020, equal worth of Palestinian and Israeli lives. Just don't put something in there gratuitous. If you don't mean it, don't put it in. Right now we've got 40,000, at least 40,000 Palestinian dead. And yes, over 1,000 Israeli dead. Equal worth, if I were looking at that on the money exchange market, that's like one to 40. That's not equal worth, right? We can't devalue human life that much and ignore it that much and claim the old equal worth. So, make the damn call. Make the damn call. If we deserve it, and you will benefit from it if you make the damn call, because you will win votes and lose none. Thank you. This is what my uncle Fred used to call the young generator. Um, these guys have done such amazing work that I am going now off into my sunset years.
feeling just enormously gratified and, 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 and just so comfortable that the leadership of this movement has passed to folks who not only are doing the hard work, but with a sense of dignity and a sense of understanding of real politics. And I just love it. I just love listening to Walid and Abbas and Leila and Lexi. These folks get it, and so we're in, we're in good stead moving forward. Make the damn call.